Hi, my name is Andrea with Foodimentary Adventures in Food. In my household, there's me, my husband, and our adorable three-year-old little boy. On our channel, you'll find simple and tasty recipes using everyday ingredients. Hey guys, so I am kicking off week two of Low Spin November. And what that means is that I am just using what I have on hand in preparation for buying Christmas gifts. So just cutting back now. So I decided to make some ribs, had ribs in my freezer. So I just threw those on the grill and smoked them using up some Napa cabbage that I got on a Trader Joe's haul. And I'll link that in the description box in case you all wanna see it. And then I just decided to make some baked beans on the side. I do have a video showing how I make my baked beans and I will try to remember to put that video in the description box so you guys can check it out. But this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. Hey guys, so let me show you what we are having from our freezer and pantry tonight. I made this shrimp scampi from CPAC and I just prepared it according to package directions and I am serving mine over some white rice. And then I sauteed some green beans. Now the green beans I actually had in my freezer um, they are from Aldi and I prepare them just like they are fresh green beans. So I put a, some olive oil and garlic in the pan and then I just saute them um, with, um, I don't add any water or anything like that. Then I just added some seasoned salt. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. Hey guys, so dinner tonight came from our freezer. So we are having these Philly cheesesteak seasoned beef patties that I picked up from Aldi. It's been a couple of months ago. They have green peppers, onion, and provolone cheese. This is the first burger product that I can remember buying from Aldi. Howard did throw these on the grill and they are very good. You get six third pound patties. And when he was grilling them, you could actually see the peppers and the onions and the cheese and they also really didn't shrink that much as you can see that patty is covering the whole bun um, so i was pretty surprised about that they taste really good they have a good flavor on top i just added another um, slice of provolone cheese on the side we are having some garlic and herb fries that i picked up from heb which is a grocery store here in texas I've had these in my freezer for a little bit. Crispy thin cut fries seasoned with parsley, um, spices and garlic and here they are. I actually did deep fry these and these are pretty good too. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. Hey guys, so we are actually eating dinner at the table but I cut my burger open so you all could see what it looks like. And you can see those peppers and that cheese you can see how juicy it is. And we do like our burgers well done and it's still super juicy. But I just wanted to come back and show you guys uh, what it looks like cut open. Okay, so our freezer meal tonight are these wings from Walmart. They are Cajun style dry rub. So I baked them in the air fryer and then afterwards, I sprinkled on the dry seasoning mix that comes with it. The wings on the bag look wet, but they don't look like that at all in real life, but they are still really good. I used to buy these all the time and um, I bought some, I guess a few months ago and using them now, but this is what they look like. And it comes with a lot of seasoning in that packet and I never use it all. So let me show you. This is seasoning packet. And as you can see, I didn't even use half of it because it is pretty salty and I feel like there's enough flavor there already, so I don't need to add the entire bag of that seasoning. And then we are also having this spicy Thai shrimp fried rice from Trader Joe's. I picked it up on my last Trader Joe's haul and I couldn't remember if I'd bought it before, but then when I opened it, I realized I'd never bought this before, but it is very good. Um, it comes with a raw packet of, um, of the shrimp that you cook separately and it's in a, some kind of a sauce and then after that you add in the fried rice mixture and here it is it is very good i did end up stir frying it longer than it called for so that rice would kind of dry out but um the yellow little things that you see on the rice um, it's baby corn that's been sliced and as you can see it has the peppers 
and it is pretty spicy and it has basil in there, Thai basil, I guess, and there's lemongrass and carrots, and there were peas, but I did my best to pick those out um, before I put it in the skillet. So um, if you've been with our channel for a while, you know I can't stand peas. But anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time. Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, I am trying out a new recipe. It is called ground beef teriyaki ramen. And of course, I will leave the recipe in the description box. I had everything on hand except mirin, so I did have to go to the store and get that. But what you just saw me do was add some garlic to my ground beef. And now I'm just squirting in some ginger paste. It calls for freshly grated ginger. I don't have it, so I am using this ginger paste instead. And so I'm just gonna let this go for just a couple of minutes. Okay, so it's been a couple of minutes, and now I'm adding in some chicken broth. The recipe calls for white wine, uh, which I don't have, so that is a substitute. And then I'm adding in some low sodium soy sauce and my mirin. And I'm only adding about half of the amount of mirin that the recipe calls for. This is what mirin looks like. It's a Japanese cooking wine and you'll find it in the Asian section of your grocery store. But the reason I'm only adding half the amount of mirin that the recipe calls for is because it is sugar based. And I was reading the reviews on this recipe and people were saying that it was way too sweet. And in addition to the mirin, the recipe also calls for white sugar and I'm just going to skip that totally. People said it really didn't need any sugar in this recipe, so that's why I'm just using half of the mirin. So I'm gonna let this go until, the, until it reduces just a little bit, and then I'm going to add in my fresh broccoli. Now the recipe calls for you to microwave your broccoli first, but I'm gonna add it to the skillet and let it cook down instead of microwaving it. Okay, so my sauce has reduced and now I'm just adding in my fresh broccoli and I'm just gonna cook this until it's crisp tender. Okay, so the broccoli is crisp tender now and what I am doing right now is adding two packages of this top ramen, um, reserving that seasoning packet. I boiled the noodles, drained them. I put a little bit of sesame oil in there just to keep them from sticking together. And now I'm just adding them to the skillet and I'm going to give them a good toss. Okay, so I have dinner all plated up. I tasted it and it is pretty good. I like it. I don't miss the sugar in it at all. Um, it's not a super juicy dish, um, but again, it's flavorful and I would definitely make it again. On the side, or for a side, I should say, I decided to make these chicken egg rolls that I had in my freezer. I threw away the box, but this is what it looks like. I got it at Walmart. And let me tell you about these egg rolls. They come in a big box um, and you get eight of them. I've tried to make these several times in the air fryer and they didn't turn out. They kind of had a, a gumminess on the inside. So today I decided to deep fry them, thinking they might need a little grease. And they kind of burnt up a little bit so initially when i took them out of the grease they were kind of like a light brown but again they were still gummy and you see right there like all around the sides it's just very very gummy so i put them back in the grease for another few minutes and they burnt up um, so kind of disappointed not crazy about these egg rolls i probably would not buy them again because it doesn't it seems like no matter how much you cook them, whatever cooking method you use, they just stay gummy around the inside. But anyway, very pleased with the recipe. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time.